Hello YouTube, um, I'm Sarandalot and I just found out something cool about uh, a certain aspect of rendering in cycles and I thought I'd share, made a quick, uh, relatively simple tutorial, uh, pretty easy to follow along, um, just to kind of get it out there because uh, first time I looked I couldn't really find anything that was really short and simple, straight to the point, so what I'm going to do is do a fast little tutorial here about how to create mist, that uh, sort of atmospheric distance effect uh, in in cycles, but the easy way, very easy, it's going to take like almost no time at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and start right here. So here what I have is a little scene I set up with different objects at uh, different distances, a couple of monkey heads, a couple of cubes, and if I go ahead and just put this to rendered view, I'm in cycles right now, uh, it's a simple scene. I have a chet uh, checkered texture on the floor. These are just plain diffuse, diffuse textures. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is go over to my render layers and just click the mist under passes here. I'm going to click mist. And what that's going to do is give us a new option over in the world tab over here. So here in the world, I just have a sky texture as the background. You don't need to have it. I'm just going to have it there. You'll see a little bit uh, for demonstration purposes. Uh, you don't have to worry about the settings on that at all. But what that just did, when we just changed the mist, it gave us this drop-down menu, which was not here before. And what this is, is basically almost exactly the same as what used to be in, or what it still is, what I used to use in the internal render, Blender internal render. So... I believe if we go uh, to the camera here, and I'm just going to hit show the limits and the mist. So now that I hit mist here under the camera, I can see exactly where the mist is going to start and where it's going to end. So I'm going to go in back into my world tab, change it so it starts maybe, I'll keep it it starts at 5, but what I'll do is I'll change it so it ends at, uh, let's say 40. So now, I just do this mist is going to end about here, so what's going to happen is that uh, over here there's going to be not, not a lot of mist, and over here there's going to be a lot, as, as the, the fall off is quadratic, but I'm not going to worry about those settings too much right now. So if I hit zero, now go to my camera view, I'm just going to save it, uh, and I hit F12 to render it. I'm rendering it just now at, uh, you can see it's fi at 50 samples, just to make it uh, look decent, for, but for demonstration purposes, if I was rendering an animation with any glossy materials, I'd probably render it in more samples, uh, although my computer right now is running off an AMD, I'm running off an AMD machine, and there's no uh, graphics support for cycles uh, at the moment, GPU rendering support that is. So now it's all finished here, so I'm going to hit control left arrow, go into the compositing view, and as you can see I have a few things lined up here. Immediately what you'll notice is that on your render layers box, you'll have this mist pass right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I'm gonna take that mist pass and put it directly into my viewer node. If you don't know how to viewer node, get a viewer node, just uh, hit control, shift, and then click on any box that you have. And the viewer node, if you don't have one, will appear. And if you do have one, it'll automatically snap to that box. So I'm going to take mist pass and put it into the viewer node. And as you see here, this is just a plain mist. So anything that's black, the darker it is, the blacker it is, the less mist you'll have. And the whiter it is, the more mist you'll have. Now, what, what we have here is kind of a masked situation going on. And the easiest way to do this is take a mix node. It's, it's an under color. You just hit shift A, color, mix. It's right there. You take it, just uh, drag it in, not... You want to take the mist not as an image, but as the factor uh, of a mix, and take the original image and drag it into the top, the top, uh, top node there. And what you did, I'm just gonna put this out to the compositor as well, is well there you go, it's mist, right? Simple, easy. Uh, that's like the easiest way to do it. Uh, there's nothing nothing to worry about, you just plug it in, and it works. You can change the color 
of uh, you can change the color of this, you can change the, the, the type of this as well, you can make it dark, sort of like, I don't know, it looks kind of cool like that. Uh, but basically what we have is um, is something that you don't really you don't really have a lot of leeway with. I mean, you can change the settings in over here in your world panel under the mist, but I mean, if you really want a lot of control in your compositing, what you can do is get this thing here, which is a map value. It you hit Shift A vector and map value. That's where you get it. So I'm just going to take that, and drag it in between the mist and the the factor there. And if I hit Control Shift and click on the map value here, this is the view that we saw before. But now we have some settings. We have some settings to play around with. So here we go. The the and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend to know exactly what these do, but I'm gonna basically show you what happens here. So if uh, the offset basically it takes it takes the value that you get, and it basically adds or subtracts a certain a certain amount from it. <clears throat> the, the value here. It gives you an interesting effect, like if you want it to look like extremely foggy or whatnot. Like I mean, that's that's what you want to do. I mean, I mean, there you go, fog, crazy fog. Um, but let's say let's say you want to get a little bit more a little bit more subtle with it. You can take the size value here and decrease it. Now, what's happening, if you'll notice, is the background is becoming darker. Now, in our original image here, if this is at 1, you'll notice that none of the background is visible. But now, if I change this down to, let's say, 0.3, I get some of the sky actually in here. And what I'm going to do just quickly is go back to my original view, switch up the. Um, I just made a little, a quick little change here, so the sun was coming from a different angle, so it'll give a bit more of a better demonstration with the uh, the background and how it works. So, uh, well, this finishes. I'm just gonna switch back over to the uh, the compositing view here. Let's change this back to one, so you'll see. Um, and I mean, I don't know much about these values. I've just been messing around with it myself, but you can you can mess around with it, see what you like. So here's the original image. Here's the image with mist, and as you can see, you can't see any of the change in the background, which is kind of nice to be able to see that. So let's let's see what happens when we put this size value down to 0.3. Ah, so we did the mist. We did the atmosphere kind of disturbance going on here, but you still did that kind of gradient in the background across where the sky texture is, and which in my opinion is a really nice kind of effect. So you can mix these effects to get uh, just just the kind of thing that you want. I don't know if you're looking for kind of a sunset, change it maybe more to a little bit more of an, of an orange, an orangish yellow kind of color, make it look uh, a lot more warm. The use minimum and use maximum, basically it's, it's pretty intuitive, you can mess around with it yourself, but I'm just going to give you a quick little view. If uh, let's say the size is at one. If I use the match of, uh, if I use the match of, oh, the offset was on. Sorry about that. There we go. Size is at one. If I use the match of, let's say, 0.5, there's going to be no value greater than 0.5. So it's sort of like you changing the size, uh, changing the offset a little bit, kind of. Except it it cuts it off as soon as the value of, of the. Uh, this thing gets to 0.5, it cuts it off, and nothing gets, nothing gets higher than that. Minimum is the same sort of deal. So let's say the minimum of 0.5, now it, nothing is going to end up being uh, lower than 0.5. So you're going to have mist, a lot more mist everywhere. So you can mess around with these values, change it up a little bit, uh, and ultimately get something that uh, looks it looks pretty good. So thanks for watching this uh, short little video tutorial. I hope you I hope it helped. Hope it was uh, easy to follow. If you feel like it, let me know what you thought. And um, I'm just I'm just glad this is easy to do because I mean it used to be that in cycles you had to do some crazy stuff with a Z pass and uh, there were a bunch of different ways to pre-render stuff. But I mean this it was pretty simple and you get a really nice really nice looking result. So. Thanks for watching everyone, uh, I hope you have a good day, and I will see you in the next video.